what a wild week of fantasy football. Some guys that, you know, had been missing finally showed up. You had some oh-so-stinky poopers in the pants this week and a very special heartfelt apology on today's episode. Make sure you like, subscribe, and enjoy the show. The football season's the time for excitement, so go ahead and switch things up with a new recipe from HelloFresh. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, it's never been easier to try something new. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, with the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And Foot Clan Slow is just right if you are on vacation, a sloth, or describing QuickBooks. More like slow books. Oh, QuickBooks sucks you in, and then it slows you down with the manual process, integrating difficult and glitchy delays that leave you scrambling for the numbers you need. Now is the time to make the switch to NetSuite by Oracle, the number one financial system, because NetSuite gives you visibility and control your financials, inventory, HR, e-commerce, and more. It's everything you need to grow all in one place. And you can automate your process and close your books in time, no matter how big your business grows. 93% of surveyed businesses increase their visibility and control since switching to NetSuite. Special financing is back. NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind financing program only for those ready to switch today. Head to netsuite.com slash footballers right now. That's special financing at netsuite.com slash footballers. Netsuite.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, September 27th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast returns for another episode. Bet you didn't expect us. <laughs> the cliffhanger is <laughs> over. We're back. Uh... And we have guess breaking news. We do a another great weekend of football. Oh Oof. yes, a yes. lot of fun. Where kickers rule the day. <laughs> they did. Justin Tucker and Mason Crosby. I could watch that Justin Tucker field goal for infinity. I could just watch it over and over. It was it was unbelievable. The things the Dan drama. Campbell would not want to do for a thousand. <laughs> no, that is true. Sorry, Lions fans, you should have won that game. Well, not really. Hollywood Brown should have caught passes and you should have lost easily, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but <laughs> tomato, tomato. It's Monday, and oh, so uh, yes. we do want to get sophisticated and react to the weekend with all of your submissions for Monday Punday. Let's begin. Yes, I will begin with Mike Will Yums. Oh, <laughs> delicious. <laughs> About Nawi Harris. Or uh, just star chase. Oh, Kyle Pitts the bed. Mmm, stinky. <laughs> uh, Justin Fields. Oh, mm. cry, son Williams, or or why, son Williams? Alexander Rad, totally Radisson. <laughs> Shamian Harris. Mm. Noah Fart. <laughs> Noah Fart. It reads so good. It's just the little part of the letter missing. Why don't you take this one, Jason? Oh, Big Ben. With has been Roethlisberger. That one's good. Or, of course, Tyler Conkwin. Conk. 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 Mm, there, was, there was more uh, conking than gronking this weekend. There was. He was Tyler Conklin was was fantastic. Every week there should be a Conk versus Gronk. Oh, and Ooh. you count them? Yeah. Cronk wins this round. Now it's tough because did you, you just call him Cronk? I did. What is this? It's Conk. You're going Cronk? <laughs> yes. Uh, do you count? Is it, is it per reception or is it per uh, the actual amount of times you say it? Because every time Gronk catches, it's it's at least four. And, oh, because you and say Conklin is two. No, it's uh, it's fancy points. <laughs> okay. It's who performs better. But uh, what a weekend. We still have another great game on the slate tonight. And based on the 2021 NFL season and these games that are all alone, we're going to have a good time tonight with mm -hmm. the Eagles and Cowboys. 
TheFantasyFootballers.com for all the player profiles and tools and player news and everything you could possibly need to keep you informed and get you ready for each and every matchup. You can become a part of our fantasy football community at jointhefoot.com. That gets you a bonus weekly show that gets you premium perks and resources. You get tools like the Stream Finder tool, the in-season projections, the Start-Sit tool expanded to four players. Um, you get a free copy of uh, our our book that we came out with. You get a whole bunch of, of resources to help you with fantasy. And you get to meet a bunch of great people, become a part of our Discord server and community forums and uh, it's a good time. Everybody loves it. Everybody, everybody, everybody. everybody's doing it. Rave reviews. Everybody, everybody's doing it. Uh, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. If you'd like to watch the show, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league presented by sleeper. We did find out that Tua Tungavailoa went under injured reserve before the window, uh, the week three game for the Dolphins, so he won't be back for at least three games. At least three. They are targeting week six to get him back. After what took place this weekend, is it net neutral? What, with uh, the way Jacoby played? Jacoby played well, and you had, like, Mike Kosicki had, I don't know if you saw this, he had, like, 12 targets, 10 catches. Jalen Waddell had, like, 15 targets. It was a... It was a wild game. I won't. Uh, but two is not known to to light it up. Sure, and, and look, this what Brissett is a is a very capable backup. He's he's a fine quarterback. He's not a starter or that you know you don't want him starting for your team for all seventeen games. But he can carry you in the event that someone is out. I that's TBD. That was just a that was one of those wild games where things just spiraled out of control and the offense was supreme took them to overtime yeah. and it definitely had a good showing it it scares you I think a little bit for we know what Jacoby Brissett is mm -hmm. and we would hope that the gap between him and franchise quarterback is very 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 wide <laughs> um this did not feel as wide as we would hope would you guys like to summarize the Running back landscape for the San Francisco 49ers. They simplified it for us. Kyle Juszczyk, <laughs> my man. Great friend of the show, Kyle. Congratulations on your opportunities for this week. I mean, it was it was interesting that the way the way they uh, deployed the running backs, it was Trey Sermon because he cleared the concussion protocol. It's kind of what you would expect. He's a third-round pick. Uh, I thought he didn't look very good. That's, that's what I'm saying. It was interesting. In the first half, it seemed like – he was, in fact, he, they started with him, and he was ineffective, and they moved on. And then all of a sudden, it looked like it was all Kyle Juszczyk uh, out there getting it done. But the second half came. Trey Sermon got back on the field, started – he got a few more opportunities. He did have a rushing touchdown. So if you played him, you were – You got bailed out with you, the touchdown. Yeah, you got bailed out with the touchdown. Uh, and I think this, to me, says that if Elijah Mitchell is – healthy next week I think he'll be the guy again is you can't say that for sure with full confidence yet but that's the way that I would lean right now yeah or they or they could be happy with what they got from use check and or yeah he could be interesting as well uh week three injuries to talk about uh we obviously have studs and duds on today's show maybe one of the biggest busts so far in fantasy yeah. football AJ Brown exited the first quarter with a hamstring injury which means he gave you 0. .3 fantasy points coming off a 5.8 point week. Um, he hasn't finished inside the top 30 in three weeks. Obviously, you didn't expect that once the injury happened. But, you know, he had a couple juicy matchups coming up with the Jets and the, and the Jaguars. He could be limited or miss them. It's just unfortunate. I mean, he has not been what fantasy players had hoped for. And with Julio there... What do you do with A.J. Brown at this point? There can be only one. There can be it's only my, it's, one. It's a real Highlander situation for the Titans. Only one wide receiver. It can, was a worry. Could be, could be supreme for fantasy football. Julio looks like he still has it. Uh, I mean, as far as what do you do with A.J. Brown, I'm not sure you can do anything right now because he's. I expect he'll be out at least for a week. Do you and think he, people will still trade for the name, though, at a higher value than maybe what he will be worth? I think they could, and especially if you were to – I mean, the, I don't know when the MRI results will come out. Um, I, I would expect that he is going to miss at least a week. Uh, would you so trade you, him for Adam Thielen? That's interesting. I don't. I think that's the kind of deal that would get done. You know, an older 
uh, overperforming maybe right now in people's minds. Later draft pick for AJ Brown, an early draft pick. You can make the case. I, I think that would depend on my roster. In in a vacuum, I wouldn't. I would rather hold on to AJ Brown for the for the season long uh, upside. But if you need a wide receiver and you know you lose AJ Brown, maybe you're uh, one and two. Yeah, I mean you, you you that that might be a trade you go actively looking for. Um, just to make sure that your your team keeps Adam, winning ball games. Adam Thielen has scored in all three games. He has four touchdowns. I th I don't this know. Who, um, might have been Andy Barron. Somebody said somebody posted like the the regression for Adam Thielen is one of the most delayed regressions they've ever <laughs> yeah. seen. Yeah, just keep waiting. The touchdown regression. Uh, Tyler Lockett walked off the field after being down for several minutes with an apparent knee injury. Didn't he come back? He did come back, okay. I believe. Uh, mild MCL sprain is the theory from Matthew Betts, our injury expert, but we'll follow up this week. The Steelers are falling apart in oh, so many man. different ways. Juju Smith-Schuster, a rib injury. Deontay Johnson was inactive. You even had Chase Claypool come down hard after a catch and grimace on the sideline. Uh, we'll, get into, we'll get into their situation when we get into the Dare this, I say the studs part of the show? Yes. No, I'll yes. bet it's the duds. Not for Najwee. Well, sure. Okay, yeah. one of them. Claypool kind of has subscribed to the the old school Mike Williams method of football. He he, they they're very similar. Yeah, they really are. Uh, um, which is fall hard. Yes, that's the that's the whole. You open the book and there's one page and it did, says fall did, extremely hard. Did you guys speaking of falling? They're hard. the milk crate bros. Oh gosh! Oh, oh, that is sensational. Did you guys catch the play? Uh, I caught it on socials because what you know Sunday it's it's insanity with all the games on. I missed this play, but Roethlisberger kind of rolls out oh, to the yeah, right. I know exactly the play you're talking and about. And he he trips up on his feet like a baby elephant. Oh no! And, and but it, which is look we've. We've all tripped on our own feet. I'm not. I'm not shaming him for that, but, but definitely the, Al has but, when I threw him a pass. Oh, yeah, but the velocity with which he fell to the ground too fast <laughs> after tripping himself. It, it's, it's like just, a face plant. Yes, there, yeah. he, he there, goes down like a sack of potatoes. Yeah, there were quite a few comical plays from Big Ben in this one. Big Ben has always been. Uh, a, He's always a, been a sourdough loaf of bread. <laughs> But he is straight. He's sourdough toast. He is oh, done. Yeah. He is. I mean, unfortunately, he is. Yeah. Sorry, Steelers fans. You know. Yeah. You watched, yeah. You watched the game. You've watched the last. You know. They should year. be apologizing to us at this. Right. right. We we're forced to watch this <laughs> junk. Uh, Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton both left with hamstring injuries. Uh, Matthew Betts expecting both to miss week four. Possible to miss more. Um, opportunity oh. for a buy low on Kenny Galladay. And hopefully you picked up Evan Ingram. Yeah. Like, I, I know that they were... I know I did. Both of these guys missed, uh, and Ingram didn't really have a great game, but just saying moving forward... Targets. How, how do you not game plan that Ingram is your is your top target? James White was carted off with a hip uh, injury. Yeah. What have you guys heard about this injury? Um, I, I haven't heard a lot other than the, uh, you know, it's it's basically similar to what happened to Ryan Fitzpatrick that landed him on the IR. Uh, so it's not a great situation. And I think that the question is going to be uh, hopefully answered on tomorrow's episode as to who is, you know, is it JJ or, you know, does Ramondre who also can uh, be a pass catching back, get the opportunity that he got early in week Which, one that he fumbled so, away. So people's, so he, he does not have, a stat line where I'm looking for Ramondre Stevenson. So was the announcer misquoting who caught the pass? Maybe. I think that's what happened because we, we had heard that he was out for this game. Yes. He's marked as out in platforms. And then during the game, we heard somebody credit him with a reception, and we were wondering what in the world happened. But now that I look at him, he has no stat line. Okay. So the mystery of whether Ramondre <laughs> Stevenson oh, it, played or not it continues. continues. <laughs> were you there? <laughs> Answer me. Uh, Rob Gronkowski took a huge hit to the ribs, came back in the game. Yeah. Uh, probably won't practice. And then Gio Bernard suffered a knee injury on a senseless play at the end of the game. Uh, probably a hyperextension. Justin Fields well, underwent. It, it, this is a quick aside comment, but did, like, did you guys catch the video? It was a week or two ago. I don't know, but it was Tom Brady uh, talking about how he does not like the how these new offensive rules are bailing out offensive players for uh you know taking big shots 
and putting they, their putting their players in a bad position. In bad position, and that stuck with me because I'm like, wow, you know, Tom Brady is very interesting right now. He, both him and Aaron Rodgers of the filters that they had on are completely gone, and they're just saying whatever they want to say uh, at this point in their careers. And I was with that information watching yesterday's game, going, Brady, you're getting your guys killed out there. What? How can you specifically Geo on multiple plays? Geo, yeah, it just seemed the the Gronk hit. I'm yeah. like. How can you be out here touting, well, you got to learn as a quarterback how to protect your players, and then you just throw them I into the into the thorn bush this week? <laughs> it, it was crazy. <laughs> How's that cactus feel? Yeah, I mean, it's fair. Fair point. Uh, Justin Fields underwent a precautionary x-ray on his right throwing hand after Sunday's game. It was returned. I would have done that, too. Mm -hmm. I did pause before I said game because I don't know no. what that was. It, it, the, the test was negative. Uh, he called himself sorry. fine. He's not emotionally fine. Yeah. He's not mentally fine. Um, That's one I mean, I'm very excited to go back and watch and see what happens. I mean, it happens. was an abhorrent game. That's yes. one I'm very not excited to oh. go. I saw enough plays where I was like, I know I need to rewatch it, and I am not going to enjoy that film. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. KJ Hamler exited with a knee injury. Elijah Moore suffered a concussion. And uh, just breaking this morning, the Panthers are trading – uh, tight end Dan Arnold, the postman, and a third-round draft pick to the Jacksonville Jaguars in exchange for former first-rounder C.J. Henderson. Poor Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like, he got shipped out on. Uh, yeah, our boy Dan pri Arnold. Priority mail to Jacksonville. Our boy on the three and and0 Panthers. <laughs> He's loving his life. He wow. got got a good amount of money. He He's did. on a winning team. And they're like, mm, now uh, enjoy the Jaguar sucker. <laughs> now, uh, at, at first glance, this seems like just a complete death knell. But James O'Shaughnessy was, yes, super involved. Eight targets week one and then goes, you know. Urban is like obsessed with tight ends between kicking the tires on Tim Tebow and then making, this, making a midseason trade for Dan Arnold. I'm just saying, like, you, I would much rather be on the 3-0 Panthers. Oh, sure. That's yeah. a human. <laughs> yes. And not around uh, uh, Urban. Yes. Monday night update, Zach Ertz has been removed from the COVID-19 list. I really wish you could just play Goddard's. Mm, that <laughs> like would if you be could nice. play Goddard's, just you would team get, tight end. get enough points. Uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Make sure you download the Sleeper app, join the breaking alerts channel, and you'll get those alerts and updates faster than any other source. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Josh Allen. Oh, baby. He's back. Uh, this was what you wanted to see if you had drafted Josh Allen or if you were a Bills fan um, or if you like Emmanuel Sanders and Stephon Diggs, any of the above. 43 passing attempts, 358 yards, four passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. And uh, what does he get as a reward? Houston next week. I mean, this is what we were hoping for. Disappointing beginning to the year, but he's obviously – uh, going to be great for fantasy. This is just indications that don't don't overthink start sit decisions. Washington was like, oh no, they're a good a good defense. Just start your job. I I overthought one this weekend and I played Allen over Brady and I'm very happy that I made that change. Justin Herbert. Yeah, the touchdowns came through for him this week. It felt inevitable because he's had such prolific performances. He has a true one in one situation with Keenan Allen and yeah. Mike Williams. I think Keenan Allen's the one B now. I mean, 281 and well, I would agree with you on the because touchdowns matter so much, and Mike Williams is certainly the favorite to have those. But Allen still had a he still had a solid year, but 281 and four, no interceptions. They knock off the Chiefs. The Chiefs are one and two at the bottom of this division somehow. And he's completed 70% of his passes, something we pointed out last week when looking at the box scores. And he had a couple touchdowns called back. This was a regression, positive regression situation, mm -hmm. and he looks great. And uh, as Jason said, the most beautiful ball in all of football. It really, really is. Matthew Stafford, start of the week. Uh, four touchdown passes against the Tampa Bay defense. 343 continues to be absolutely lights out for the Rams. The Rams are very good. Mm. Mm. Yeah, they are. They're very good. Coop a couple more touchdowns. Yeah. You can't stop him. No. Yeah. Uh, you, you burn your mouth. Oh, the coffee? Yeah, yeah. Okay. very, very hot. Yeah. He's, very, <laughs> he's on fire. 
Tom Brady did end up with uh, 432 passing yards. Wow. And two touchdowns because he ran one in. So He was fine, yeah. He was, he was fine for fantasy. New England next week. Oh, that's so yeah, exciting. Very exciting. He'll be going to break the... Uh, was it the all-time passing yards record? Well within reach. Jason, how do you feel about this uh, Kirk Cousins run we've got going? Three weeks, quarterback 13, but the last two weeks, quarterback six, quarterback six. Hasn't thrown a pick on the entire year. Lighting the world on fire. He is. Um, Cincinnati, Arizona, Seattle. I think all three of those defenses are middle of the road. This isn't you know some situation where he was – um, facing you know the Jets, uh, you know, just awful matchups. Honestly, their defense has been a little bit disappointing. Although they came through, I mean, you look at you look at the uh, this last game. I think it's the most reassuring on Kirk Cousins because their defense only gave up 17 points to the Seattle Seahawks. You think, oh, maybe it was a shootout. It wasn't. Kirk just played great. Um, it started as one. It sure did. I mean, it looked like nobody was going to stop anybody at the beginning of that game. And you know he's gonna reach seventy points, and um, but uh, he's he's in the uh, he's in the every week streaming starting category. Seventy four percent of passes completed, eight touchdowns, no picks, averaging three hundred and six yards per game, and has elite touchdown scores and weapons with Jefferson, Thielen, and and Osborne has been good. Cleveland will be a very big test. It will. Yeah, that, that one is – it's such a shame that that's the next matchup. It's at home, though. I expect him to be all right. It's just Cleveland's so good at controlling the clock. They just take the ball away for so long. That's true. Patrick Mahomes, uh, up and down game here, three three touchdowns, two picks, 260 yards. Uh, Ryan Tannehill bouncing back with three touchdowns. No A.J. Brown, though, but the Jets and Jacksonville on the, on the docket. But Julio looks – more than capable. And they're throwing the ball a little bit to Derrick Henry. Derrick Carr, 386 and 2. They won again. <laughs> Go Raiders. They, they tried to lose. <laughs> they, they yeah, sure I did. mean, that was, uh, they got, they had some defensive players hurt. They're down 14 nothing real quick. Yeah. And then they got that safety. Yeah, it was yeah on it, one of the worst play calls ever. So similar to Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr has uh, he has not finished outside the top ten at quarterback so far this season. Carr or Cousins, rest of season. Cousins, Cousins. All right, that is the right answer. Um, before we move into running back studs and have some discussions there about Najee Harris, a glimmering Najee light, a, a glimmering target, <laughs> the light in the midst of a dark, dark, black and yellow hole. Uh, let's talk about, let's think, <laughs> let's pause <laughs> and then thank today's sponsors, including Upstart. Um, think about it. What would you do if you didn't have high interest loans or credit card debt? Because Upstart works to help you on these issues. Um, you can pay off your existing debt quickly and easily and start living your life. Essentially, if you're carrying a credit balance month after month, um, that can feel like a never ending cycle of debt with no end. Yeah. They help you make that final payment so you can get ahead. And what they do is they basically give you a personal loan. Uh, you do it all online and it lets you pay off your credit cards, the high interest loans, and uh, it can fund personal expenses. And over a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date if you're in those situations. So you can find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash footballers. That's upstart.com slash footballers. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based upon your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. So go to upstart.com slash footballers. And Foot Clan, want to thank today's sponsor, DirecTV. If you're listening to this podcast, I can make an assumption about you, and that's you love football and you want all of it. And maybe you live in a place where you cannot get DirecTV. No problem anymore. Stream the 2021 NFL Sunday ticket on all your favorite devices. No satellite required. It's like having front row seats to every live out-of-market game every Sunday afternoon. NFL Sunday Ticket.tv that lets you follow your favorite team no matter where you live. Get the Red Zone channel. Get the DirecTV Fantasy Zone channel. You stream the NFL Sunday ticket live, and again, you don't need a satellite you get shortcuts see uh, replays of entire games in less than 30 minutes player tracker follow up to 20 of your favorite players every sunday like this if you're playing fantasy football this is the best way to do it 
Go online to nflsundayticket.tv slash sundayready. And right now, you can see if you're eligible. Pro tip, use the promo code BALLERS2021 at checkout to save 15%. Again, to see if you're eligible for the NFL Sunday Ticket streaming package, go to nflsundaytickettv slash sundayready and use the code BALLERS2021 to save 15% when you sign up. All right, let's get into running back studs, and uh, I want to play a little game while we do it, which is, uh, I don't know what to call it. Will it stick? Is this for real? Is this a one week or is this something longer lasting? I like will it stick. That sounds <laughs> will like it a stick. fun adventure. Uh, does it stick? Does it stick? Cream Hunt, 10 for 81 and a touchdown, seven targets. Uh, you know, Nick Chubb had 22 carries in this game, but Cream Hunt seemed to have the meaningful ones. He's the running back one on the week so far. Really? Yeah. In fact, our own wow. Matt DeSorbo writer, he pointed out something pretty incredible. I think it's really interesting for the fantasy football world. He's the running back one with 24.5 half PPR points, which should hold even after Monday Night Football unless I mean, Zeke, Zeke goes could crazy. Do some, but but uh, from 1999 to 2020, the weekly RB1 scored less than 25 points just 19 times. That, and it's, that would be about 320 weeks. Yeah, so only t 19 times has that ever happened. And this year, it's already happened twice in three weeks. So his point is the running back position is changing. You're not having these necessarily as many of these monster performances. Obviously, in week two, Derrick Henry went absolutely insane. Right. But uh, worth observing. It just shows you that it's, it's hard to come by in, in terms of huge performances the, and not shared backfield. Yeah, I mean, the reality is there are very few, I mean, three or four full team dominators um, at the running back position, and two of them are injured. Christian McCaffrey went down. Dalvin Cook missed the game. Um, so that's that, That's really unfortunate. Um, man, they are so special when they're out there, though. It, I mean, it shows you both where the NFL is going with the split backfield and also how valuable having those guys win healthy. Mm -hmm. um, may, maybe this is the opportunity to go trade so, for them. So will it stick with Kareem Hunt? I mean, no. it, it it will stick. The fact that you can you can get this on a weekly basis with Kareem Hunt. You're uh, as as what I'm saying is this upside exists, and that's why you draft Kareem Hunt. You, you know that he will be behind Nick Chubb in terms of snaps, but he's a he's an incredibly talented running back who gets featured a lot in the passing game. So yeah, he's. He's a running back, too, with upside each and every single week. Yeah. I mean, if, if you look at last year, it, it, what will stick is what we have already seen. Not always the running back one, but last year, eight of the 16 games, he was a top 24 back. Someone that you could play, someone you could flex. Half of his games, he was outside the top 24. So, um, so far this, this year, he was the running back 13 week one, and the running back one this week, but... 42 in between so he, he's a flex option with high upside and well Clyde Clyde did have a good game this week but for those that wonder why they don't use him exactly like Kareem Hunt go watch Kareem Hunt play football yeah and you see some tackle breaking that is you uh, can't take him down yeah I mean it's kind of like there, there really isn't anybody parallel to him on tackle breaking no there there really isn't there you know Derrick Henry can run over guys and run away from guys but when you're just talking about defender has his arms around you okay go it's like a wrestling match that Kareem Hunt I I think if you gave me a hundred chances like Kareem Hunt stand there I get five seconds to tackle you he's just standing <laughs> I don't think I could get him down James Robinson 15 for 88 against Arizona had a touchdown and had a lot of uh dump off targets six for 46 did fumble has Cincinnati Tennessee and Miami will it stick James Robinson these yes. are the flashes that you needed to see from James Robinson. So if you were if you weathered that storm, I would say better things are ahead. But granted, the the Arizona defense, while they dismantled the Titans and Derrick Henry in week one, this is now back to back weeks of Dalvin Cook was uh if it, it felt like Dalvin Cook got eight yards every single time he touched the ball against Arizona and James Robinson very effective. So the run-stopping ability of Arizona is very questionable. His fantasy finish won't necessarily stick because he's not going to get a touchdown every week on the Jags, but the usage is what matters. 65% of the running back attempts, 100% of the running back targets. Going off of week two where he was, you know, had a stranglehold, uh, he's, he's the guy there. James Robinson or David Montgomery rest of the season? David Montgomery. 
Peyton Barber had a career day. 111 <laughs> res- rushing yards, career high. He's the RB3 on the week. Uh, Peyton Barber is the RB3 on the week against Miami. I it, hope you tuned into Jason this. Jason has got his hand on his face like he's <laughs> just. It's just what a world. I, I, I disagreed with, with Mike. Mike on the live stream. If you tune into Sunday Live, and I know, Mike, you asked for the tapes to be scrubbed, but they yes. have not been scrubbed. It is still out there. You said you think I Peyton, whispered. Yeah, you whispered. You <laughs> I, said, I heard I, it. I think Peyton Barber's a good play this week. And uh, you're right. Oh, Gruden. Uh, Najee Harris, 14 for 40 on the ground. That's making, gross. Making the third consecutive disgusting ground game uh-huh. performance for Najee in the offensive so line. So why is he talking but... about in the studs? But uh, wouldn't you know that Najee Harris had 19 <laughs> targets? What? 19. You could. That's. So many. You could you could absolutely project an uptick in targets for Najee as soon as Deontay was ruled out. No question. And then the perfect storm hit because Juju uh, suffered an unfortunate injury and was knocked out early in this game. Where do the short targets go? And they all went to Najee Harris. He's the number one our running back in full PPR this week. Is he? Yeah, yes. because he okay. had. I mean, he yeah, had 14 yeah, I mean, catches and 102 receiving yards. Okay, 14 now, receptions. This speaks two things out loud. It says this is excellent for Najee Harris, and this is the worst sign and signal you could ever have for an offense. Yes, when it with one that has three elite wide receivers. Yeah, I know they're banged up right now, but um, I mean this way: back step, three step, five step drop. Najee Harris. Uh, while you look uncomfortable. That's what Big Ben did this week. So, impressive. DeAndre Swift right now, I believe, is the running back three in fantasy. I thought, oh, overall? Overall over three weeks. Really? Uh, Maybe in half or full. Seven for 60 through the air, 14 for 47, and a touchdown on the ground. Um, Still split with uh, Williams. That was, but this was the most snaps that uh, Jay Willie has seen on the season. It was almost a full 50-50 split here, but... I I was going to mention it when you were talking about Kareem Hunt, but knew we would talk Swift anyways. This is a Cleveland situation where both of these running backs are startable. Swift is is clearly the guy and is the much better play. Can I caveat it a bit, though? Sure. This was a competitive game, close game. Uh, We we talked last week, a lot of Swift is, you know, the second half and all those dump-offs. If the game script for Detroit goes the wrong direction, which – I mean, if you look at the schedule, Chicago next week, that'll probably be a competitive game based on what happened this week. Cincinnati in a couple weeks should be competitive. Um, I think in a neutral game script, these guys are 50-50 partners. I would agree, 50-50 partners. But 50-50 of a team that really does want to you know, establish the run and, and the talent of Swift is just outlandishly high. He's He is uh, worthy. He's electric. Boogie woogie. And also, I just want to – the last thing I'll say on this backfield is I would love for Jay Willie to – to stick as a name. I yeah. Think, uh, <laughs> I, honestly, all I've been thinking about is once Mike said Jay Willie. Yeah. I saw him on Sunday morning on the couch just screaming, Free Willie! <laughs> oh, yeah. Free Willie! Jay Willie. Every time he gets a touchdown or a touch. Uh, and this is referencing Jamal Williams yes. running back for yeah, the Yeah, I don't Detroit know if Lions. Jay Willie we've ever heard that before. No. But, uh, but we it, will won't, now. it won't be the last time. Alexander Madison, uh, I owe him an apology. You know, he hadn't. I, the perception had been. A letdown, be, and I think that came from people were drafting him every single year. Yes, and then when he had his opportunities, he was either hurt or like you know he had one underwhelming game coming in for an injured Dalvin Cook. But there's nothing you can say negative about 26 for 112, six for 59 in the passing game. He was great. He was a great pivot if you had him, and uh, unfortunately, I didn't. However, I did pivot to Peyton Barber in a league, <laughs> oh, man. and that was great. <laughs> um. Other honorable mentions at running back. I know we got to get through these, but Eckler, Kamara, Saquon. Saquon looked good. 85% of the snaps, second most among running backs. He was not efficient in the running game, but when you get that many snaps and seven targets, you're going to be fine. Well, he should be a he should do the Najee. He should be a benefit uh, or the beneficiary of uh now Slate, yes. Slayton yes. injured and and Shepard injured. Barkley will be part of the passing game. Derrick Henry uh, 28 carries again. It continues. He's Didn't get in the end zone. Still was fine for your team. And, oh, boy, I am looking forward to the New York Jets and the Jacksonville Jaguars for oh. Derrick Henry in the next two weeks. Mm. James uh, Con- I think 
Oh, go. No, no, no. I was going to say that one name we need to bring up before we leave is Clyde Edwards Alaire because it was he, a great game. It was a great game. He looked good. I kept watching plays. It was like, oh, where's this guy been? Like breaking tackles, having speed, 17 for 100 on the ground, got a receiving touchdown. Oh, boy. That was so nice. Yeah, that's and helpful. A and a fumble. And another fumble back to back weeks. Um, very encouraging if you watch the game to watch how he did it. Did your spirits brighten up with Clyde and Ayuk both getting into the end zone? End yeah. Zone? Oh, yeah. It felt much better to know, like, these these aren't bad players. They, if two weeks that happen poorly happen in week eight and nine, they're just, you know, glanced aside. When it's one and two, yeah. man, it gets scary. But yep. also scary is I the next three weeks for Clyde, Philadelphia has been tough against the run. We'll see how they do against Dallas tonight. Buffalo has been shutting everybody down and Washington is a, is a good defense that I think will get it, you know, the ship righted on defense, uh, by three weeks from now. So a little worried. Yeah. It's just like, if you want to try to capitalize on, on Clyde having a good game, hundred yard gets in the end zone. Maybe you kick the tires. Antonio Gibson against Buffalo, 12 for 31 on the ground, so they've been stopping people there. Had the one catch. Luckily for fantasy players, it went for 73 and a touchdown. Yeah, wow. It uh, was awesome. Um, uh, Coach Rivera and the Washington staff, did you see that play? Did you see that? Would you like more? Of that? Are you making the pitch? Throw Antonio Gibson the freaking ball. Well, to they, be fair, they threw him another ball uh, on a wide open <laughs> little he, slant look, for the end zone, and he dropped it. Everybody has drops, but not everybody can take a 73-yard screen pass to the house. I mean, I agree with you. You watch him run away, and it's like, oh, they're not catching him. It was awesome. This, the, the speed that a man of his size can get up to is ridiculous. He uh, he also, they did try, I mean, they heard you a little bit yelling from home. They did try later in the game. It was tipped on another screen pass. So maybe they're, maybe they're going to go, go to the tape as my, as we'd say, and, and work more of this into it. I don't understand genuinely. This is just like a call to all 32 teams. If you have an elite player like Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, any of these prolific running backs, and you don't call five design screen plays, where you let the defensive line come through and you try to get them in space. I'm talking to you, Tennessee, mm -hmm. with Derrick Henry. Amen, brother. Uh, and if, <laughs> if you don't, if I, look, I'm even willing to throw Clyde in there. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, if you don't, if you don't do that, you're stupid. And you're Chubb, getting, get yes, him out, get yes, him out yes, there. Yes, Nick Chubb. All right, Freaking coordinators. <laughs> Uh, wide receiver studs, Mike Williams, nine oh, targets, Mike. seven for one, 22 and two, and still uninjured. He's absolutely boom shakalaka on fire. One fewer target than Keenan Allen on the season. Second most targets, second most receiving yards, second most receptions. Oh, that's in football. Yeah, that's why I was saying I think Keenan might be the one bead. The target, the target split, at least through three weeks, is so close. That Let me make you uncomfortable. Would you trade Keenan Allen for Mike Williams? Oh my gosh! Uh, I would I would absolutely not do that, and I totally understand the rationale behind doing it. Mike Williams is the wide receiver too. He's dominating. He's the touchdown guy. Feels um, a little bit like buying some GameStop at the tippy top, right? I mean, I I think after everybody else got in, there there's there's two things that can be true at the same time. That Mike Williams is fully legitimate and is a a dude worth having in fantasy. And yeah. He's going to dominate. And he's, he's a dude. not. He's and, a dude worth having. And he's not going to be what he has happened to be for these three weeks. Like those two things can both be true. And um, that we'll we'll talk about this next week. My thing to remember from last year of these dominating first four week wide receivers to trade them at their tippy top. Uh, I'm, I, just, I'm still. I'm still. I I still believe it. You know the Tyler Lockett and Mike Williams and. Some of these guys that um, are just on fire because they will fetch you a million pounds of gold and they're not going to there's a, there's do this every single week for 16 weeks. It just doesn't happen. You take a player like Mike Williams, you combine him with another player on your bench or a, a position of weakness for your opponent and you go trade for Justin Jefferson or you go trade for a top five guaranteed pick is what I would do. I'm just having deja vu of the Chris Godwin, Mike Evans year. And I remember us being here week three going, man, 
is, you know, the jokes, ha, 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 is Chris Godwin the number one on the team now? And he was. He was the number two wide receiver that year. Right. But if you remember the, the second half of that year, if you just look at the – like he finished the year at number two. Mike Williams will finish the year maybe ahead of Keenan Allen because he's already got a huge lead and, and, a, and a gap there. But the second half of that year, this is my point, is like – if he finishes, if if Cooper Cup finishes as the wide receiver one, that doesn't necessarily mean that from that trading him was a bad idea, right? Because from week four now on, he might score fewer points than sure. who you trade him for. So the the end of season ranking is not the only thing that matters here. Uh, I agree. That's a good point, and we'll talk more about it. I think in the coming few days, especially with waiver wire and trade opportunities, maybe you want to pick somebody up, and the two for one gives you the chance to do that. Cooper Cup. Oh, man. Cooper, a couple touchdowns every week. Yeah. Oh, please. 12 please. targets, 9 for 96 and 2. He is, um, he's really not, you can't stop him. I mean. You can only hope to contain him. Yeah, I mean, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. <laughs> they say that. And get, wide receivers, get, get breakfast with your quarterbacks because yeah. it works. Devontae Adams had 18 targets. And the quickest screening of a concussion in the history of the world. Oh, goodness gracious. I couldn't find the gift, but what I wanted to tweet, have you ever seen the uh, the super lazy guy doing the metal check wand? Yes. Going into oh, the yes, thing? Yes. yes. That's, yes. that's what came to mind was just like, Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and okay, Adams, you're good. Adams said after the game that he it just it was a really hard shot to the chest. I hope he's telling the truth. Yeah, I mean, I, I it didn't look like it. It looked like a man who was knocked out. And if you if you, this was years ago, but if you guys remember that mm -hmm. incredibly terrifying hit uh, against Chicago, I think it was where he was, where Adams was held up by uh, by a couple defenders, and then, and then someone yeah. came running in and uh, helmet to helmet, and it was it was very scary. So Adams already has a history of this. So the NFL came out and issued a okay. the, they issued a statement that they believe that the protocols were followed well and that they trust the independent neurological yeah. uh, doctor th there. And so, um, you know, he obviously came in, looked good. 18 targets, uh, led wide receivers in uh, receptions this week. Najee uh, led all players in receptions, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Although uh, Gesicki was pushing that too. Mm. Something to talk about in tight end waivers tomorrow, but uh, with Jacoby. Emmanuel Sanders, what a game. Two touchdowns, five for 94. Ran the most routes among Buffalo wide receivers. Truthfully, you had good games in PPR leagues from all three Buffalo wide receivers. You had Diggs, Beasley, Sanders, all relevant. Sanders ended up with the touchdowns in the monster game. But we were very excited to start him after what we saw last week in the involvement. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see that pan out. Justin Jefferson looked great, nine for one eighteen. Mike had a uh, prop bet with KJ Osborne, and he kept oh he, every pass he kept hoping would go to KJ Osborne, and it, it would was, always be Jefferson. It was an absurd ten leg parlay, and I <laughs> just KJ Osborne. I needed like like two yards. Jamar Chase is good. Mm. Four for sixty-five hmm. and two. Hmm. Now, do we? Uh, do you want music? A uh, music bed? I sure. guess he does. Sure. <laughs> I'll take. I'll take music and a camera, please. Uh, Jamar Chase. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize to you directly. Uh, you're good. And uh, while I was not the, you know, you weren't my number one. Wide oh, receiver. here it comes. And here goes I thought butt. that there was no chance in the world that you could pay off a fifth round value in fantasy football in your rookie season. And I apologize to you because I think I was wrong. <laughs> and uh, you, you look very good. Qualify? No, no, no. I, no, I, I don't think that was qualified. I'm saying I, th I think I believe I was wrong. Well, I think I was wrong or I was wrong. Those are two cent different. Yes, you know. that's, that's what I'm saying. Uh, okay, well, you know, there's a long season. Oh, but okay. I'm just saying, oh no, it's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Conditional <laughs> apology. <laughs> it's no different than me saying Mike Williams is like it's. There's no guarantee what's happened so far happens all year. You, he's here's my full, real, unconditional apology. I did not think you'd be able to come into the NFL right off the bat. And be worthy of that pick. I talked about trading for you midseason and things like that. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Unconditional. Full apology for 
uh, Jamar Chase. You look excellent. You have four touchdowns in the first three weeks. All other rookie wide receivers combined have three. Good on you, and my sincere apology. Will it stick? Deshaun no, Jackson, no. three for <laughs> no, no, not not with him. Deshaun Jackson had three for one twenty and one. He is no. a desperation play. Yep. Uh, and AJ Green, six targets, five catches, one hundred and twelve yards. Will it stick, Mike? Uh, I mean, that's what we have. Two good games now. Yes. Yeah. For AJ Green. Yeah. What it. it, it Yep. Yes, I, yeah, we did. That's two good games and two good games for Christian Kirk. Um, meanwhile, I, I, I have to imagine he's in the uh, poopy pants club here. But Ron, Rondale Moore, yeah, it was ex or uh, Rondale less, er, yeah, it was less ex snaps, extremely less disappointing. And will it stick? I would say it, it'll stick, kind of like you know when you uh, the, the the quarter machines at the grocery store. You get the little guy who's got the the, the sticky hands. Yeah, you throw him at the wall. And he does stick, mm -hmm. but then he kind of slides down and he sticks again. Nothing that happened this slides weekend. Slides down, sticks again. Yeah. So it it's going to – Kyler's playing out of his mind, and it's going to bounce be between the wide receivers. Even even Hopkins is like it, – not it's it's not the hyper-focusing on, uh, on one player. You will not do well to chase the previous week's best – not Hopkins player. We said it on the show last week, and I d this doesn't change anything for that. Yeah, I mean, Kyler Murray is completing seventy six percent of his passes the last two weeks, eighty one and eighty two percent. He's averaging three hundred and thirty five passing yards per game. He is setting the earth on fire. Yeah. What I like about Green is that they do use him in the red zone. He's big. He was able to stand there and be big and catch a bomb, hail mary where he just stood there. I mean, uh. But Green, Kirk, and Moore are going to have weeks on the weeks that you don't expect them to. Yeah, well, I think I think sometimes you can actually see it coming. Andy, t you know, two weeks ago, you called the A.J. Green. There was um, a great – Rashad Breeland. Exactly. The, the matchup was great, he, and you know where A.J. Green's going to be on the side of the field because Cliff Kingsbury doesn't, you know, change things up. Um, this week, we kind of could see it coming because of the Hopkins injury. Hopkins was talked about as being a possible game time decision. He was a little hobbled. I mean, we talk about Rondell Moore. He had one yard, um, uh, completely disappeared. He only had 20 le fewer yards than Hopkins who had 20 Hopkins was not really involved in this game. And then fast forward one more week, the Los Angeles Rams are there and you have to imagine Jalen Ramsey is going to be on a hobbled Hopkins. Um, so you might. You might be able to call this next week as well, um, but I, do, you know, I think as the season progresses, AJ Green is not. I I don't believe he's looked special on film. I think he's, like you said, been the been a really big body on a good offense. So you could try to call and pick your moments. Yeah, Rondale was not out there for a lot of snaps. So the biggest thing is if you want to just bank on availability, being out there on a play, like having started Rondale in a couple of leagues and never seeing him on the field, that hurts. At least when you have a wide receiver out there. Um. Oh gosh. Okay. I someone just dropped in an AJ Green on deep targets chart where he was 122nd last year and he's second right now. Wow. On Pro Football Focus's rank. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you, same when deep, you have three same deep game target. sample sizes, uh, things be crazy. <laughs> Still better than 122nd. Certainly. Uh, Conklin, Conk Kelsey, Kittle. Hey, Kittle looked good. Yeah. Seven for 92. Wish he would have scored because I, I was hoping he'd be the number one tight end this week, obviously, with the start of the week. That was the prediction, and he didn't. Oh, my gosh, he led the 49ers in rushing yards in the, in the first half with a nine-yard run. Uh, Gesicki, 12 targets, 10 catches. Gesicki we'll talk more about. If, if, if this is what you're going to see from Jacoby Brissett, target-wise, it's important. Mm -hmm. Mark Andrews, five for 109, nice bounce back. Tyler Higby, five for 40 and a touchdown. Logan Thomas scored again. And Jason, I'll oh, let you. Oh, the Muth. Pat <laughs> Fryer Muth. Oh, Pittsburgh Steelers rookie tight end. The Muth was Muth all over the field. <laughs> Got that touchdown. I mean, he didn't would really you, do would anything. Would you play other. him if, uh, no. Have you if Juju and Deontay are both out? I, I don't want – oh, man. No, I don't. I wouldn't because I just don't think the Steelers are going to score much, and I think the only way that the Muth has what if they unleash him? You can't unleash no. the Muth in year one or any rookie. I don't think in. you can contain the. You Muth. can only let him loose. <laughs> so stupid. 
Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> stupid, but it's fun to say. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> Pooped in his big boy pants. I don't think that moniker could be more appropriate for any player than the first one we want to talk about here. Yes. Justin Fields was handed a fresh, clean pair of big boy pants this weekend, an opportunity to start at quarterback to, as we said last week, seize the job, take hold with a firm grip, and, um, well, don't check the drawers. Overflowing with <laughs> caca. I mean, <laughs> it is a nasty, nasty pair of drawers uh, that he had to take off after this game. The Six for 20 for 68 yards. Took nine sacks. Uh, the Bears averaged 1.1 yards per play versus Cleveland, which is the second fewest by any team in a century. <laughs> this is going back to leather helmets, right? And um, I think this predates when they helmets. <laughs> when they didn't even know how to throw the football. I mean, every single time that I looked up and saw him, which wasn't often because when they got the ball, they then quickly got rid of the ball. Um, but when I looked up, you saw a guy snap the ball, stare down a receiver who was heavily covered. Always. I mean, the, the, kudos kudos to Cleveland's defense. That cannot go unstated. They, they, were, they looked great. Their defensive line was great. They made fools of the offensive line. And their DBs were all over the wide receivers. But it doesn't change the fact that he would s take the ball, stare down one receiver, Throw it to him, no matter how many guys are on him, or, or you know the, and then predictable results happened. It looked like a, it looked like a first time college freshman being thrust into a game that he was not ready for against Bama. And yeah, yeah, and it it really just and it compounded as the game as it went on. He didn't improve. He almost devolved. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and people want to blame Nagy for Fields struggling. And they want to blame Dalton for Dalton struggling, but yeah, yes, I mean Nagy, I Nagy played a part in what took place. Obviously, didn't put Justin Fields into a position to succeed. Miles Garrett played a part. Everybody played a part, and everybody deserves blame. Yeah, and the worst part, the worst part of all of it, was three carries for twelve yards. I mean, the baseline from a mobile quarterback. If he wanted to go out there and run for fifty, sixty yards, or let's just call it sixty-eight, since that's what he threw for. He, he could. He has the physical ability, but um, yeah, that was that was one of the most disappointing performances in a while. I had him in our DraftKings head to head to head challenge, so where, I am. Where did you finish? Uh, I finished in third place, bro. <laughs> that's that's a bronze medal for me. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, no, I, he was he was clearly very disappointing. The the expectations were high, and the results were lower than. It, you thought possible and to uh i'll just throw him in here now we don't have to talk about him when we get to wide receivers but alan robbins is one of the biggest busts through three games and i would say the the biggest bust yeah based maybe based on just having three full games of playing football combined with draft capital i i tend to agree like aj brown at least has a touchdown right i mean yes. like, i guess robinson scored in week two and yeah. was somehow still irrelevant here here's the thing this is why we brought up last week that things might not be better when you switch to a rookie quarterback. This is why you should be afraid if the switch ever happens in San Francisco mm -hmm. or at least have an awareness that it, it's not all roses. Like, it's also thorns. I mean, for Mooney, for Robinson, for, rose. for Montgomery. I mean, what's the future for David Montgomery in an offense that looked this abysmal? And so at this point, I'm rooting. I'm hoping Dalton comes back healthy. That's what I'm hoping for. For the ancillary pieces. For the ancillary pieces. And um, luckily the team can do that with no harm done to the psyche of Justin Fields because it was an injury that took him off. And um, maybe let him play against somebody else next yeah, time. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that Justin Fields is out there next week. It's the Detroit Lions who – they kudos to them. They have fought hard I and looked the, better. I love the and, Lions. I'm, go, I'm going public with that. Yeah, no, they're a lot of fun root to root for, for right now. Um but it's a it's an easier defensive matchup than than the Browns and Miles Garrett in that pass rush. So I am hopeful that Fields can brush that one off because I, we all know he's more talented than what he did on the field. And then have a good game, and then maybe be replaced by a healthy Dalton. 
Carson Wentz stinks. I don't want to watch him play football anymore. 19 for 37. Yes. Um, Good. I have let down my full. I've, I'm, I have nothing left. <laughs> I have nothing left. It's over. Yeah, he uh, sucks. Um, <laughs> not, running backs. Sorry, Carson. Horrible game for Jonathan Taylor again. Not getting the target share. Not performing. Not scoring. Miami Baltimore next two weeks. Not excited about that. Jonathan Taylor is in the bust category right now yeah, through I, three weeks. I would say he is a bigger bust than Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson has scored fewer points. He's he's done very little. But Allen Robinson also did not cost you what Jonathan Taylor did. Um, and, man, super, super disappointing through three weeks. The Dutch oven got David Montgomery as well, <laughs> 10 for 34. Oh, no. Uh, four targets, <laughs> two for 21 through the air. <laughs> Just the world's biggest blanket. Um, oh. I'm very worried about. On the count of three. Yeah. One, <laughs> two. Over the whole team, and they all had to whiff it. Um, I'm worried about Damian Harris. Damian Harris was six carries, 14 yards. Um, Tampa Bay is next week. You don't succeed running on him very on them very often. Damian Harris is uh, yeah. a bit of a panic alarm. I don't know that the absence of James White will necessarily give him a bunch of targets, but it wasn't pretty. Tyson Williams, Mike, why don't you talk about what happened here? With, uh, with I contain really, yourself. I really wish that I could, but I have no idea what happened. I He ended up – I mean, when you looked up and it was like, okay, Latavius Murray's on the field again. Okay, that's fine. And then Devonta Freeman kept getting on the field and – uh, you know, surprise, surprise, being terrible every single time he touched the ball. And at the end of the game, somehow Tyson still led the running back room in snaps. It felt like he was never on the field. Because it when felt he would, like, like I couldn't believe that he led in snaps because every time we watched, he was never out there, but he was, it just, it was a, a fake to him or it, just no opportunities. Yeah. So and, what do you do now? I... Hopefully something comes out from Baltimore that they they had a plan, they had a scheme that somehow giving the ball to really maybe, maybe he had a bunch of boils on both hands and they didn't want to expose his uh, hands maybe. to like the pain so this of is, holding the football. This is a player now that I think a lot of fantasy managers are going to question: Do I drop? Do oh, I? Goodness, do not drop. No, him. you don't. But my point is, if people are having that that level of belief, that level of worry, saying it, five carries, you know, this just isn't. He's not what we thought he was. What we hoped he was. This would be a trade four target for me. Um, awful game. The game script got away. It, honestly, Hollywood Brown changed this game more than anyone in the sense that, like, there were three plays that just bombs that hit him in the hands that he dropped. Um, well, let's where, talk about him now then. Sure. So uh, let's move into wide combining receivers. Combining that, I think that that hurt, you know, the Baltimore Ravens offense as a whole took maybe goal line opportunities away. But I do think that this is a team that wants to run the ball and, and he it looks their best. He was on the field the most snaps. So he's a guy that if I could trade fodder for and about Tyson. stash him, Tyson, I would. What about Hollywood? Would you trade for Hollywood yes. after two drop touchdowns? Yes. I mean, Mike brought him up. He was Mike's start of the week. And the talk about process over results. He has been great for – And he was great ten, in the game except for – Ten straight games going back to last year. And he was great in that game. Didn't I say he was setting us up for something? I think we said he – This Maybe. is the, the perfect situation where he just – I didn't expect this. Like, he looked great and I would I would trade for him. But he was just like setting all the fantasy players up to finally feel fully confident, and then he dropped three balls. The thing it, that one made of them it, was tipped in in his defense, where it's like uh, the defender gets a finger on it just at the last second. So I can s sort of understand that one. But the other two were they were house calls that if he just had, didn't have the butter fingers, he r runs a seventy yard touchdown in. Yeah, and and um, once it gets in your head, uh, that's. The, the, you it know, was you, obvious it was in his head. Oh, for sure, and and you know that you're gonna need a day. You know you're, and he should be fine. He should come back next week and and be fine. He's a professional wide receiver. He knows how to catch the ball. He's done it his whole life. Um, just don't drop the first one next week. Please. Are you are you worried about um, Robert Woods now? Three weeks in, three horrible duds. 
it does seem like perhaps he is not attending the breakfast with Matthew Stafford, and he has 27 yards after the catch, which was his calling card. This is not – it's three weeks, and we've seen what yeah. this team is doing. They're also – I mean, Deshaun Jackson's there. They're using Van Jefferson. They're using Tyler Higbee. This is not just a Cooper Cup versus Robert Woods thing, is it? No, no, it's not. Um, he – put it this way. Robert Woods has never been a high upside guy. He's been a high floor guy. He has been someone that is the first read, a hyper-targeted player. Um, he always ends up in the 130 target area. Well, he is currently on pace through three games where the offense has looked good and they've been chugging along. He's on pace for 107 targets. Now, that's a 17-game pace. So, uh, below, uh, you know, uh, or right around 100 targets. And if you're only getting 100 targets for Robert Woods, he is not a high-end fantasy option at all. He is a flex start um, and, and someone that you need to be looking at your options of who else you have on the roster and, and making start sit decisions. He's not an auto start. Hollywood or Robert Woods? Hollywood. Rest of season. Hollywood. All right. Uh, Corlin Sutton, not the game from last week. Five for 37 in this one. Noah Fant didn't do much. Tim Patrick was kind of the leader. Five for 98. It will be interesting but with uh, now Judy missing. or We knew Judy was out, but now KJ Hamler with what we don't have the full results yet, but watching the injury happen to his knee, it looked like this is at least a at least one game, probably a multi week injury. I don't want to speculate. Had you know, not a doctor, but just watching football for so long, the eye test said that was not a an excellent injury. Well, and and one of the one of the problems in this game for the receiving options was game was over exactly. I mean yeah. they they dominated the Jets from the from the first whistle. And Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams had great games. Um, so I'm, you know, it's it's ironic because you go, oh, the Jets are so easy; they're a great matchup. But it's probably better, you know, the next two weeks: Baltimore, Pittsburgh, the Raiders. After that, um, those are teams that are going to put up points and require wide receivers to make plays for your offense. Scared about Corey Davis? Ten targets, but just five for forty-one. No, I probably holding. Yeah, holding I'm, on I'm holding. I mean, ten, ten targets is is great. Rondale Moore, two targets, barely yeah. saw the field. That one is scary because of what you said. He didn't see the field. You watched the game, and it was. I don't understand why. I still, I still, I don't, I don't have a rationale for it. I mean, you have a player. Uh, may, the only my only thought is like, he fumbled right off the bat in the game, like right on literally a punt return. Punt, yeah, yeah. I mean, the first play of the Cardinals offense was him fumbling. I don't think it was related. I don't either, but that's like a please be hey, that. But, but it was like week one, right? Like week one, he was barely on the field too. That's true. He, 20... just, he just was more effective with those limited snaps. Yeah. It's, it's a risk when you try to roll him out there, but we talked about that earlier. Robbie Anderson, just the two targets on Thursday. Hawkinson. Yeah, just I, I saw a uh, 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 Monday Punday TJ like, blocking son <laughs> because he was. Oh, because he's blocking. Yeah. Two for 10. Yeah. Um, what was it? The this is the jock strap game, not the hockey leagues game. Yep. Yep. And then Noah Noah fart uh, two for fifteen. <laughs> I'm not. That's not sticking. Noah <laughs> fan deserves better from us. I mean, the hawk strap isn't his nickname. It's just his nickname when he does stuff yeah. bad. I think Noah fart is pretty good. Uh, Robert Tunyon, one target, yeah. one catch. It was a, a chance to score. He just didn't get in the end zone on it. Kyle Pitts, two for thirty five. Um. I'm not panicking with Kyle Pitts personally. Uh, if you are, you panicking with Kyle Pitts? I'm not panicking, but it was very strange to see only three targets. I did listen to the post game, and they were talking about what the Giants' defense was doing to specifically scheme out Kyle Pitts. Um, it's not necessarily encouraging that teams can do that. Yes, but uh, you know, it, it. I think there'll be brighter days. But it's a rookie tight end, as Jason has always pointed out, and. Um, I still think he offers you more upside than most tight ends out there in the fantasy market, but the offense looks pretty trash. Yep. And this game was disappointing from an over-under perspective. Darren Waller, not a great week. Gronkowski, 4 for 55. Uh, are we done with Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry Excuse completely? Excuse me. Uh, Gronk was 4 for 55. 55! Thank you, Jason. You're welcome. 
All right, uh, that'll conclude the old Dudaruskis. Also, yes, Andy. You're all are, are we done, done with Henry? Done and, with the Patriots tight yeah. ends? Yeah. Might be done with like Patriots offensive players outside of a Jacoby Myers PPR play. Yeah. Right now. Uh, we want to thank Pristine for supporting the show, pristineauction.com. A Jalen Hurts signed Eagles Lunar Eclipse alternate speed helmet, $55. Oh, man, that sounds awesome. Devontae Adams signed alternate speed helmet, $57.75. Since ends Tuesday night, use the code ballers at pristineauction.com uh, to get a $10 credit. And uh, before we close today's show, um, I think we all wanted to say a few mm -hmm. words in yes, memory of friend and colleague Mike Taglier, who uh, passed away from COVID 19 at the age of 39 this past weekend. Uh, tremendously sad to hear that news, and all of our thoughts and prayers are with his wife, Tabby, and their family, and his Fantasy Pros family. Um, we all knew Mike. He was uh, he was a really, really, truly great guy. Like, you know, I, I we, we, we got lunch with him one day, and he was so kind, so nice, so jovial. And, and so excited to be in this space full time at the time. Yeah, I don't know if you guys remember, when he came, it, well, he visited the, the, the office, and we had known him because he was rising up the, the PFF ranks. Uh, and just like really making a name for himself, and he comes in. He's like, "I got huge news. I got a, I got a full time." And we're like, "Where was it?" He's like, "I can't, yeah, he I can't he tell, you. tell and us." He, he wouldn't break, and we kept, we kept trying to get him. Like, <laughs> so when is CBS gonna announce that you're full time? He's like, "No, man, mm -hmm. I'm not. It, you'll, you'll see when the news comes out." He just, he was such a, a good dude. Yeah, and and I would say the hardest working in yes. the industry, the, the grind that he loved to do. Yeah. He'll be sorely, sorely missed. He's a great, great man. And, um, yeah. And, and fantasy pros, uh, they have a GoFundMe that they have, uh, set up that benefits his family. Um, I've already seen the fantasy community rise up Incredible. and support their, yeah. their family and, um, seeing Tabby's response to that and her gratitude. And so we will put the link to that GoFundMe in the description of the podcast and uh, we'll link it on YouTube as well so that you can go and support uh, Mike's family um, and commemorate uh, just an incredible career in the fantasy football industry. He will be and, missed. And more importantly, a really, really great person. So mm -hmm. uh, we will miss you, Mike. And, um, yeah, just really very difficult to, to think of this industry without him. So mm -hmm. um, that'll do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers. And uh, we wish you all well, and we'll be back with Waiver Show tomorrow. Yep, and good luck with your, your Monday night. Should you need a Monday night miracle? Uh, which I do. I need 40 points from Devontae Smith. Is that is that happening? Might be asking a bit much. Yeah. See you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.